All right, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today we are having a look at the Constellation HLV mod, which is being made by forum user Doc Bones. And what this glorious little piece of work looks to add into the game is pretty straightforward. It's all the parts necessary for you to build the Constellation Heavy Lander Vehicle. And it is a pretty cool set of parts, though I should point out right off the bat here that it is very much in development, but it's already at a stage where I find it quite impressive and so here we are for a video today and uh, so yeah let's head right into the VAB and take a look at what all this mod does have to offer us now let's go straight up to the search bar today and put up moon print as that is the manufacturer is moon print industries but again still in development and not all the parts have had the industries part added to the back end of the word so if you put in moon print you should be good for all of the pieces and the first part we're going to have a look at is the HLV MAV, which is a Duna Ascent vehicle, so I guess technically shouldn't that be DAV, but meh, minor thing. And it is a pretty impressive command pod that I do quite enjoy. Now let's go back to the pods real quick and grab a Mark 1-2 for comparison, and uh, you'll notice that the MAV is quite a bit bigger, which of course does make sense considering it holds a lot more crew at a crew capacity of 6 max maximum one minimum of course it does also have a built-in data transmitter its own RCS you can see the RCS thrusters right there and there a reaction wheel of course the crew report science experiment a battery of 500 electric charge liquid fuel of 1065 mono propellant at 500 and oxidizer at 1302 so overall not only does it hold a lot more Kerbals but it also holds a lot more more resources and overall is pretty interesting it also does have a built-in ladder at the bottom for that bottom hatch right there and uh yes my only only one problem with this thing because i mean it's a cool looking part modeled beautifully is yeah the texturing is just a little bit sad but that being said again still in development and on the mod page that is one of the notes that they have on there that texturing is still a work in progress so hopefully it will get better in the future and of course for me preferably i'd like to see it become more stock alike but for the time being you know what it may not look the greatest but it's still a very capable part and uh, definitely isn't too out of place so i still find it very enjoyable now the next part we're gonna have here is uh well we need a nose cone up for the top it's a little bit flat up there and one thing to notice with the nose cone we can either place it on that attachment point there but I should show off something else we have a lower attachment point as you can see it can go right in there and now the purpose of the two attachment points at the top is so that you can have the nose cone like this flush with the rest of the design and then have a docking port hidden under it because the nose cone is a decoupler so once you've gone back out of uh, Duna's atmosphere and into orbit, you can blow off this nose cone to reveal the docking port underneath. So that's quite nice that you do have those two different nodes there for your convenience, which is pretty cool. Now we also do have some attachment points down at the bottom, and the main four, as you can see here on these sort of half tanks, are for this specific engine right here, the MPHLV240, and they have a maximum thrust of 240 kilonewtons, and we'll use 3.798 liquid fuel and 4.641 oxidizer per second and of course are used for the uh, final ascent of your vehicle back into space and you do have four of them here so let's place them all around there we are lovely and they're very very nice little engines got a pretty cool particle effect we'll show that off here in a little bit now the next thing we're going to need here is the hlv2 tr 38d coupler and what this does is it goes under here on this attachment point though i actually do need to rotate it this way so that it can connect it right there and this is what your uh, mav will actually decouple from when it's on the surface to then fly back into orbit and it allows us to now have a docking node or rather an attachment node right here 
so that we can change basically the orientation of the rest of our landing craft, rather than having it, you know, sort of the standard capsule with landing legs right here in a more cylindrical fashion, we can now go sideways by using the HLV landing frame, which if we rotate that way and connect, there we go. Now we have a lot more space up in the front and back to attach a lot of fun things, including some more engines. And we have these awesome landing legs here, which we can retract, which I really do love. They are very industrial looking. I like the Moonprint Industries text there. A little bit hard to see because of the red on gray choice, but overall a very, very cool design. And it fits in a lot of fun parts. The first being an HLV cargo container, which is also the decoupler that you'll use to basically launch this thing from the rest of your ship. So you'd launch it into space on a rocket like so, and then this actually has a decoupler at the bottom to release it from the rest of your rocket down here. Let's actually put it back sideways for the time being. Now another fun thing about this cargo container is I don't have it on right now because I don't have the Kerbal Inventory System installed, but this is also a Kerbal Inventory System container. So if you had that, you'd have the option of storing a lot of fun stuff here for your Duna mission. We also have another one of these cargo containers for the front, just slap that right there. Again, it is a Kerbal Inventory System container if you have that installed. We then have this bow tank, which has a lot more liquid fuel, monopropellant, and oxidizer. And that goes, okay, let's rotate it correctly, right there, excellent. So that we have some more fuel resources. And at the bottom, it has two attachment points for another engine, the the MP HLV 350. Now this has a max thrust of 350, will use 4.118 liquid fuel and 5.033 oxidizer per second, and they fit just nicely right into there. And these are more for your descent to the surface of Duna, which really you'd want to use all the engines uh, to make sure you have all the power you need to land. Uh, but yes, which is why I kind of find these a bit strange that it's 350 kilonewtons of thrust max on those. I mean, in atmosphere, this one's 223 on the ascent vehicle, and this one's 332, so it's a much more powerful engine, so you'd think it kind of unbalanced things. And it has for me, but that's also because I'm a horrible, horrible pilot. So maybe, you know, chalk that up to that. Now, besides all of these parts, now this is basically right here, what you should end up with for your actual heavy lander. But like I said, you gotta get it into space on something. So if we retract the landing legs here and have it in more of a rocket-like orientation, what we have is this next part, the HLV-2 fairing adapter and decoupler which is also an unmanned command pod. It has its own built-in engines, which have 300 kilonewtons of thrust and uh, use a 7.245 liquid fuel per second and 8.855 oxidizer and also do have 297 liquid fuel and 363 oxidizer on board. And this thing just goes right on the back here. And uh, yes, this is what you're going to use to attach it to the rest of your ship and also attach your fairings. Now we have a specifically custom built aero shell for this to serve as the fairing. And we have it in two pieces. We have the HLV heat shield right here, which we can slap on. There we go, a very nice heat shield. I do love the look of that, actually. I quite like the texturing on it. And then we have the HLV aero shell on this side. Perfect. We got the cool little heat and nose cone there. Now you can see right there, it actually does have built into both of them a RCS engine, as well as the typical ablator, and it does have its own oxidizer installed on both of these as well, which is quite interesting, and liquid fuel as well. So yes, it's a, a lot of things with a lot of interesting resources, including in the fairings. Now we still have some more bits over here. You can see these two little recesses in the arrow shell. Now those are specifically for, oh god, I always forget where parachutes are for some damn reason every time every time I have to come into the game I go to the wrong place there we are and this is specifically these little alcoves for 
parachutes. So you can pop those into there. And then we have, if we go back to Moonprint, these two little back and front covers that will go just right over top of them to cover them up for launch. And you'll notice they are also decouplers. So when you do enter the Duna atmosphere, you'd ignite these, blow them away with the decoupler force, then release the uh, parachutes to help you slow down your descent. And then finally, you'd release the shell and use the engines for your final descent down to terra firma. Well, technically, terra firma, I guess, Duna firma. But, you know, yeah, works either way. And then the very last part that we have here is the HLV docking port. Now, this is meant for the connection of this to the rest of your rocket, as it is not only a decoupler, a giant decoupler in this size, but also a docking node, which does lead to one issue. You'll notice that it, it isn't showing up anywhere in this uh, order over here. You have to do it manually for the time being. I don't know why exactly, but hopefully the mod maker can fix that, because right now it's kinda, it kind of sucks to de you know right click and detach this thing in the middle of a flight, uh, because it is quite thin. And then from the bottom here, you just you know build whatever rocket you need to get this thing into space and to tuna and you'll be on your merry way. Now let's actually load up a craft I built earlier, a very, <laughs> very crappy one that was made hastily, uh, just so that we have the proper order, because you can see over here, this order is an absolute mess. And frankly, to get this thing into space properly, which of course we're not gonna be, this thing's barely gonna make it a few thousand feet, honestly, with this engine, but it takes a lot of work to get all of this stuff into order because of all the different weird pieces that go in a different stages it's just a, a absolute pain in the rear so I've already gone ahead and done all of that so let's just go and launch it real quick I also have another one that's just the lander which will show off too, to show off the uh, particle effects for the engines but let's do this one first and let's actually control it from the bottom here because of course the uh, actual lander inside is at an angle which it probably shouldn't be so we'll control from here uh, again the interior view is just the mark 1-2 which is a little, a little bit sad but oh well what are you gonna do there and let us Let's just turn on SAS and uh, oh boy, let's actually just get this decoupler ready to fire and throttle up and away we go. All right, I'll probably cut this thing off prematurely and decouple it. I don't want us to go too high. Yeah, that's good. Just cut that off, decouple. Oh boy, oh, we're rotating, and you'll see one of the problems. You'll notice the things are moving around on the inside of the fairings. Yeah, they uh, they do that. <laughs> Now let's just go ahead and release the decoupler force here for these different covers. So we'll launch those away to reveal our parachutes. And we'll launch those to start slowing us down, hopefully. <laughs> oh, I don't know if this is actually going to make it. I actually haven't tr oh, tried doing this and I just flipped it around. Okay, okay. Oh, oh, oh boy. I'm, I'm messing things up here. <laughs> yeah, it wants to be either going up and down that way or the other way. So hopefully once the parachutes catch, there we go. Ooh, those fairings opened up quite a bit. <laughs> oh yeah, that's definitely something that needs some fixing right there. And now technically, at this point, we're supposed to unleash these and... Okay, release that. And engines! Nope, didn't turn on the engines in time. Though surprisingly... Huh. It's pretty tough, it survived. All right, there we go. We got parts about to fall on us. Ah, thankfully they had the parachute. <laughs> oh, it tried to cover us back up. Okay, so let's actually uh, extend the landing legs here, which is gonna be a bit weird now that we have this part of the shell. Oh, lovely, but there we go. Technically we landed. Everyone's safe and only a few things exploded. I'm gonna count that as a win. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so we have our Constellation HLV, which that did decouple. I wonder why it's still showing on there. Oh, well, let's activate the engines and actually show off those real quick. You can hear the insanely loud sound when those things start up. And let's actually take it off a little bit. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. They are fairly powerful and have a fair amount of fuel inside the tank, so they'll go for quite a while. There we are, let's release that. 
And so you'd land, you'd go and do your mission, do your thing, and then when you're ready to go into orbit, you would just decouple from there, and away you go! Haha! <laughs> and I just realized I don't have a parachute on this thing at all, so, um, they're going to die. But this is actually a pretty powerful engine. Let's actually run this thing. Ooh, ooh, it doesn't have a very good SAS though, apparently. No, 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 no. Back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. Oh, oh God. The SAS is not powerful enough to keep it intact where I want it to be going. So we're actually having to manually control. I'm just intrigued to see how high on Kerbin this will go. I haven't actually tested this yet, but I do love the particle effect here. And dear Lord, though, I am going to have to... Uh, turn down the volume on this massively in editing because oh boy oh oh god we flipped we flipped okay okay recover recover yeah it's not wanting to recover okay i'm just gonna cut the engines off there <laughs> and actually wow that got pretty impressively high escaping the atmosphere and gravity of Kerbin here we got up to 46 kilometers so very easy for this thing to escape the atmosphere of Duna and get into a proper orbit and then rendezvous with whatever you have up there which is quite cool we would have gotten higher if it didn't start uh, yeah, it started getting a bit squirrely on us uh, uh, the higher up we went, which was uh, a little bit depressing. Uh, I guess we, well, we could have turned on RCS perhaps to actually help out with that a bit, but oh well, <laughs> we made our choice. Now let's actually revert back to the vehicle assembly building and just have the MAV without the, <laughs> the pain of the shell, etc. crushing into us, just to sort of show it off a bit more on the launch pad, as it is a pretty cool piece overall. I really do like this thing. It is an awesome lander, and if you have the Kerbal Inventory System installed, you have a... Ooh boy, we're leapfrogging apparently. There there we go. If you have the Kerbal Inventory System installed, you have some awesome space in these two containers. Loads of resources to get you onto Duna and then of course to get back into orbit and all in all, it is just an awesome part. So if you'd like to check this out for yourself, and I definitely say to go and give it a try, you can take a look at the link in the description as usual. Uh, but that is going to be it for this video today, folks. I hope you all have enjoyed, and of course you do come back for the next when hopefully we'll be looking at yet another wonderful mod. But until that time, thank you for watching, and as always, have a good one. Now let's launch this thing again. Oh god, I didn't have the... Oh, oh I really didn't have any of the... Uh things correct for that. Well, well, they're going to die. Later, folks.